very excited to have you all here. We are chatting today and I'm very excited that the technology has worked for us because it wasn't working earlier. So we are chatting with Jackie Narricott, who is all the way over in the UK. And I think it's about 6.50 in the morning, isn't that right? Yeah, about that, yeah, about that. So it's nice and nice and early. So I might start by introducing our schools. So both of our schools are Western Australian today. So we've got Samson Public School. Can you give us a big wave, please? Hello. <laughs> and we've also got Beach Christian School. School in WA as well. Wave, guys. Wave, guys. Hello. Hello. Okay, so we might start off with um, an introduction from you, Jackie. Who you are, what sport you play, um, and the big event that you're kind of gearing up for uh, in February next year. Hey right. guys, I'm Jackie. I do skeleton, which is that crazy head first squat down and I see track. And the plan at this stage, hopefully, is to go to the Winter Olympics in Feb. Awesome. All right, well, we might get straight into our questions. Sam from public school, can you go first? Um, are you ready to ask your first question? We might get you. Yeah. Yeah. go. First student, can we get you up the front? Big loud voice, tell us what your name is and a question for Jackie. Fabby. And my question is, have you ever crashed into a wall and why did that happen? <laughs> I've crashed several times. So for, for us, crashing really counts as actually coming off your sled. So in my early years, I crashed most years, but thankfully that hasn't happened for, for a little while. So that happens when you don't quite get the corner right and you either come down too early and then get picked back up again and it flips you. Or, yeah, it was, just, it was just that. So uh, I stuffed up what I did going through the corner, which then meant that the outcome on the end wasn't what I wanted. So, but just, just hitting a wall, we tend to just hit the wall and then bounce back in, which whilst it's not ideal, it tends to happen most runs. Great question. All right, Beachborough, can we have your first question, please, in a big, loud voice? Yep, just coming. Hi, I. Uh, hi, my name is Thomas, and my question is: Why have you chosen the skeleton, and what do you like about it? Um, I chose it because basically curiosity got the better of me, and it looked like fun, um, which is exactly what it is. The, the best thing about it is the speed. The feeling when you get it right going down the track is almost like you're flying, but you're still attached to the ground. Awesome. Great question. All right, Samson, your turn. Okay. Hey, my name's Kalani, and my question is, how long have you been doing skeleton? This is my sixth year. So finally, finally starting to get, to get good at it, hopefully. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. All right, who's up next from Beachborough? Hello, I am Joma, and my question is, have you won any medals or major competitions? I've won medals on the North America's Cup, which is one of the more development tours, but I haven't won a medal at a major championships just yet. Hopefully this year. <laughs> Good question. All right, Samson. Hi, my name is Thomas, and my question is, what are some of the rules when you are competing? Oh, where do I start with that question? <laughs> there are plenty. I guess so the biggest ones will be there's a weight limit for us. So both me and my sled have to be, for me, over a certain well, <laughs> we got that one. That, one's, that one gets a little bit complicated. Basically, for the, the Olympics, the main competition rules are that you have to start within a 30 second clock. So we get a, a green light which says track is clear. We've got 30 seconds to then start running and cross, cross the first timing eye. And then we have to cross the line in contact with that sled so that our head crosses the line. Do that four times and that's how okay. the race goes. 
Awesome. Thanks for that. Good question. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. All right. Beachboro, are you still there? Can we have your question? Who's up next from Beachboro? Oh. Oh, we lost you there for us. We've just heard you again now. No worries. There we go. Um, my name is Laura, and my question is, do you need to live somewhere with snow to participate in the sport? Nope, definitely not. Um, <laughs> I say that because so I'm a Queensland girl, and obviously there's no snow anywhere near me in Brizzy. And even over here in the UK, there's no snow. So we just have to travel. So we spend six months of the year traveling around the world to places that have a track. You don't necessarily need the snow. The snow tends to get in the way, actually. But as long as it's cold enough for them to keep the ice on the track, we're good to go. Great question. Okay, Samsung, your turn. Uh, my name is Harper, and my question is, how do you stop at the end of a track? We stop using our feet. So the uh, spikes that we use have lots of little pin-like bristles on them, and that's our brakes. And on some tracks where it's really fast, coming up the outrun, so the outrun is the point of the track that goes effectively as uphill as they can, as they can make it, then they'll, they'll oftentimes be uh, big foam padding there as well that we run into. Thank you. Good question, Harper. Okay, next question from Beachborough. Um, my name is David, and my question is, have you ever felt like giving up? If so, when? And what did you do to overcome this? Yeah, there's uh, giving up not so much, but there's definitely times when it gets tough, and which is which is normal. Like every, everyone one goes through that. You just kind of got to simplify things and then remember why you're doing it. So for me, obviously, it's it's the Olympics, but for everyone, there's going to be little reasons that will get, get you through it. And having good support from fam friends and family and just reminding yourself that this is only one day, it will get better, makes things a little bit easier. Awesome. Great question. Okay, Samsung. Samson, your turn. My name's Chloe and my question is, do you have a special diet when you were training and competing? <laughs> no, this might come up. You know what, I'd love to say yes, but no. So for me, it's about, particularly on tour, it's about maintaining weight. So I, I eat as healthy as I can, but the odd chocolate is there. In fact, most days at training because we're, we're speed athletes, so having that little bit of sugar whilst we're on the track can actually be a good thing, but not in massive amounts. That's just, that's silly. Thank you. All righty, Beachboro, your turn. Hi, my name is Karina. If you could choose a sport apart from the one you have now, what would it be? Either athletics, which is what I came from, or beach volleyball. What's number one cross? There's too many. Good question. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dylan. My question is, have you fled? Sorry, I missed your question. Um, yeah. Have you ever fallen off your sled? Yeah, plenty of times. Well... Plenty times. No, not for a little while now, though. Thank you. It's not too bad. <laughs> right. Okay, Beachboro, your turn. Um, hello, my name is Emma, and my question is, um, have you, do you have a job outside of the sport? Yeah, so I don't get, oh, well, I get a little bit of funding now, thankfully. But yeah, I, I work about 30 hours a week at the at a running shop in Bath here, which is enough to just help me survive. Thank you. No worries. Okay. 
placements and your turn next. Hi, my name is Jada and my question is, are you different when you're not doing the sport? Um, in terms of personality or what do you mean? As in what else is, what else does she like to do when she's not, when she's not training? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, cooking, when I'm home, I love going to the beach. I miss that about being away from home so much. Um, just generally kind of hanging out, but it's a, I, I hope I'm not, not too different. It's just, I get to ride different waves as opposed to, uh, water ones. <laughs> Great question. Thank you. All right, Beachboro, your turn. Alrighty, hold on. I think we've just lost you again, so I'm not sure if I can't hear you now. No, we've we've got you. We can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, there might be a bit of a delay. We can hear you a little bit, so hopefully you can hear us. Yeah, we can hear you. Go go ahead, Katrina, and we'll see. Okay. Um hi. Hi, my name is Katrina, and my question is, what inspired you to become a skeleton track Olympian? My uncle, actually. So my uncle went to, well, was a dual summer and winter Olympian. So the original plan was to go to the Summer Olympics. I think it was London was what I was aiming for. And then, but things didn't quite go to plan. So I tried, tried skelly, and it fit. I've wanted to go to the Olympics since I was seven. Or something, something, something silly like that. It's just I finally found the right spot. Very cool. And your uncle was the first uh, Australian to go to both the summer and the winter Olympics, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So the only other person who's done it is Jana. <laughs> Very cool. It's cool. So lots of like Olympic, Olympic running through the blood. Okay, mm -hmm. Samson, your turn. Do you have a question for us? <laughs> Hi, my name is Leo, and has have your has your design of your sled changed over time? Yeah, um, but my current design of my sled, I actually did, but before that, it was just plain black with a couple of. I think I had a yellow something cross on there at one point, um, but now it's a. It's maroon for Queenslander, obviously. Be a bit of beach, and then the Aussie flag. It's, it's about as creative as I can get. <laughs> Good question, Leo. Thank you. All right, Beach Pro, your turn for a question. Hi, my name's Anne, and my question is: Have you made any friendships from the sport that you see regularly? Regularly is tough because quite a few of my of the, the friends that I've made are from, from other countries. Um, being in the UK, I train alongside some of the Britain girls, so it's nice to see, nice to see them when we can. Um, but yeah, the the sliding community is pretty pretty tight one. So I've got friends from all over the world. Which when we finally get together for World Champ, well, World Champs, World Cup, then we get a little bit of time to hang out. It's nice to see everyone again. Awesome. Good question. All right, Samson, your turn. <coughs> Hi, my name's Hamish, and who's your biggest rival? Ooh, <laughs> there's many of them. Um, the Germans, the Canadians, the Russians, and the British all have incredible athletes at the moment, um, particularly <laughs> the Germans and the Canadian girls. They're definitely some of the toughest. Thank awesome. you. Who won the gold medals in the skeleton at uh, the last Olympic Games? Uh, so you've got Lizzie Arnold Sorry, from Jack, GB. Sorry, we're losing you a little bit, so feel free Sorry. to keep talking. Okay, did you, no so, uh, so Ash has just said, so the two reigning Olympic champions for us, uh, you've got Lizzie Arnold from Great Britain on the women's side, and then Alexander Trechkov from Russia on the men's side. No and I think the, the guys will change this year. All right, Beach Bar, can we have another question from you? We, we can hear and see you very well. 
Yeah. We can hear you again now, so hopefully you'll hear us. Yes, and we can. Hello, my name's Sam, and I was wondering if you have a coach that trains you. Yeah, I have a couple actually. So when I'm here in Bath, I've got a coach who does all my sprint training, and then my gym coach is actually based in Brisbane still. So he he does all of that via the internet. I think wonderful wow. technology we've got. <laughs> yeah, and then this year for the first time in a few years, I will actually have a sliding coach with me on tour, which will be nice. Awesome. Okay, can we have another question from Samson? Thank you. Hi, my name's Keisha. Um, my question is, how many hours do you train for? Ooh. Uh, training about 12 hours a week at the moment, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you combine it with 30 hours a week, it's <laughs> quite exhausting. Thank you. Good question. All right, Mitchell, we'll have another question from you when you're ready. Okay. Hi, my name is Rochelle. Have you injured yourself doing this sport? Thankfully, no. Touch wood. The worst I've ever done is a bit of bruising and concussion. So no, no major injuries, which is nice. Thank you. Okay, Samson. Hi, my name is Max and my question is, can you see people when you're going really fast down the track? They tend to be just blurs. So when, when we're sliding, we'll have some idea sometimes if they tell us where the coaches are standing. And because of the colour jackets that, that they're wearing, you can kind of pick out who they are down the track. But for the most part, it's one big blur. If you can tell who's standing where, not entirely concentrating on what you're actually supposed to be doing. Thank you. Good question, Max. Okay, Beachbury, your turn. Yep, we're ready for you. Hi, my name is. Hi, my name is Freya. Is it hard to keep your body in position when sliding? Um. In the perfect skeleton position, yeah, a little bit. Mine never is where it's supposed to be. Well, in that perfect kind of feet together form. But because of, because of the Gs, we're always moving and always steering, so there's always that little bit of movement. If you stay perfectly still, you tend to be a little bit too stiff, and then that way the sled just doesn't quite react the way that you'd like it to. Great question, Freya. Okay, <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> Hi, my name is Noah. What does it feel like to get out there and compete? It's good fun. So the Olympics would be the biggest crowd I've ever got to compete got to compete with uh, in, and I can't wait. So we had a, a a good crowd at World Championships a few years back, and it's such an adrenaline rush. Some people love it, a lot of people don't. Um, and it's just the noise that they create is fantastic. You can to have to actually have people on the start line cheering, whether they're cheering for you or not, you know, neither here nor there. <laughs> it, it's still noise, and it gives you that little, little bit of extra boost. Interesting. Question, Noah? Oh. Thank you. No worries. Okay, Beachboro, do we have another question from you? Yes. Hi, my name's Niklaus, and my question is, what do you eat for breakfast? Pardon, I missed that. It was, what, eat for breakfast. What do you eat for breakfast? Generally, it's either porridge with fruit and a bit of honey, or Greek yogurt and oats and kind of fruit, nuts and seeds. Thank you. Depends on what I feel like. Thank Great. you. Good question. Okay, Samson, your turn. Hi, my name is Loic. How steep is the track? So each track's different. Um, the steeper track in the world is Whistler, where we drop about I think it's about seven stories from the start down to the end of end of corner two. So it's really steep, and then it just keeps getting steeper. Whereas other tracks are a little bit more uh, 
Flávio. Good question. Hey, Beach Bear, your turn. Hi, my name is Kirsty, and my question is, how fast can you go on your board? The fastest I've ever gone is only 135k an hour, but the fastest anyone's ever gone is 147. Wow. Which is crazy. <laughs> Very fast. Thank you. Yeah. But faster than, than you can legally drive a car, which is so much fun. <laughs> Okay, Samson, do we have any more questions from you? Yep. Hi, my name is Caitlin, and my question is, how many different slides have you used in your career? I've had three. So the, the first one that I started on was more of a development sled. So it's a, a little bit stiffer, not quite as fast. Then I progressed onto a, a different sled, which is from Bromley, which is one of the sled manufacturers, which was really good. And then now I've... I got onto my new sled a couple of years ago, and that's that's one of the fastest sleds that we can get now, which is, is cool in the way that I can change the way that it's set up to match each track and then how I want to drive. Awesome. How much does the sled cost? My current sled's worth about $12,000. Oh. So there is, yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, it's an expensive little sport, but it's fun. <laughs> Great question. Okay, no worries. Let's have one last question from Beachborough. Hi, my name is Charlotte. When did skeleton racing become part of the Olympics? Um, skeleton racing first started back in the 1920s, I think. But skeleton, as we know it, um, only came back into the Olympics in 2002 with Salt Lake City and then we've been a part of it ever since. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, okay Samson, do you have one last question for Jackie? Not anybody's got a last question they wanted to ask. No, Ms. Bird, you got a question? No, we're fine, thank you. Oh guys, th thank you very much for your questions. They were fantastic. I hope you um you. all learned a little bit more about skeleton today. And we are going to chat to Jackie again um, in a couple of months' time and see how her training is going and, and her road to Pyeongchang. And then hopefully we get to talk to her as well from the Olympic Village next February. So cross your fingers um, for Jackie. Let's uh, give her a big round of applause and a wave goodbye. Thank you for all your Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Jackie, we will chat to you again soon. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye.